Hello on mechanics, in this episode we are going to show you how to replace the MAF sensor on a Mercedes W204 1.6 liters petrol engine. As its name suggests, the mass airflow sensor is used to measure the mass flow rate kilograms per second and not the volume of air that comes into the engine, sending an electrical signal to the ECU so it knows how much fuel to inject for the desired air fuel ratio. The mass airflow sensor has a rectifier which ensures an even flow of air for a correct reading and in the center it has a temperature sensor and a hot wire. The wire is called hot wire because a constant tension is heating it up. Usually the wire is made of materials with high temperature coefficient of resistance so any small temperature changes will result in measurable changes in resistance. Also, Ohm's law tells us that the electrical current flowing through a conductor, as the wire in the diagram, is inversely proportional to the voltage. The higher the resistance, the smaller the current. But material resistance depends on temperature, as the higher temperature equals to higher resistance and vice versa. The incoming air mass, or actually the number of molecules in the air mass, cools the hot wire, reducing resistance, thus the current increases. The ECU interprets these readings and decides on how much fuel is needed. Symptoms of a malfunctioning MAF are Check engine light illuminates Lean idling Engine not starting properly Engine drags Delayed acceleration Excessive fuel consumption Smell of unburned fuel from exhaust On this car, just some of the above symptoms were present and not all the time, but eventually the check engine light came on. Because this was not the first MAF sensor that the owner replaced, it was clear that an electrical fault was causing the MAF to fail. But where was it? After doing a bit of research on Mercedes forums, we found a very incredible possible fault which you will see at the end of the video and how we easily solved it. Don't go anywhere guys, meet you back in the shop right after our short intro. Alright guys, we first use this diagnostic tool to read the fault. This is where the OBD2 port is located. Follow the easy steps shown in the video and you'll have no problem reading the fault. The tools you will be needing for this operation are a 13mm socket, an 8mm socket, an E10 a ratchet wrench and an extender for the E10 a Phillips screwdriver a T25 Use a small ratchet wrench with the T25 for better access. A flathead screwdriver. And the most important, Click R Color Flexible Hose Clamp Pliers. 
Unfortunately, on this model, the MAF sensor is located all the way over there, so you have to remove the air filter's housing. In order to do that, use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the cap. Remove the air filter and the intake hose. You will also have to remove the MAF connector. There are three T25 bolts holding together the tube for the MAF sensor and the air filter's housing, but you can only access two of them for now. Also remove this bolt holding this small metal mount. Remove and place aside the air injection hose coupler. Remove the ECU connectors as shown. And here is where the impossible happened. The rear connector and the ECU slot were soaked in engine oil. We decided to check for oil leaks after replacing the MAF sensor. Use the E10 and the extender to remove the bolt behind the air filter's housing. The air filter's housing has two pins underneath which go inside these openings, so to remove the housing you have to proceed as follows. Pull the back of the housing upwards with one hand, and push the housing backwards with your other hand until the pins slide out of the openings. Now go under the car and remove the splash shields. You will need a 13mm socket for the metal splash shield. And the 8mm socket for the large plastic splash shield. Then use the color flexible hose clamp pliers to release this color clamp. I suggest you arm yourself with patience and once you grab it do not release the pliers. After releasing the color clamp you can remove the air filter's housing. As I said earlier, do not release the pliers, or it will be very hard to place the color clamp back on. Only now you have access to the bolt that I talked about earlier and separate the MAF sensor tubing from the air filter's housing.
time to replace the old MAF sensor with the new one. We had to use the O-ring from the old one because the new one had none. Now all initial steps on fast forward. And this is how you change the MAF sensor on this model. But why was the MAF sensor failing after short periods of time? It is time to show what was causing oil to drip into the ECU port, short-circuiting the MAF sensor. It appears the camshaft sensors were leaking and because they were higher than the ECU port, oil dripped through the electrical wiring all the way into the ECU port. So changing just the MAF sensor was not enough because oil could drip into the ECU again and fry the mass airflow sensor. So I ordered two camshaft sensors and easily installed them and that operation took me less than half an hour. This is the package for the new camshaft sensors. It comes with the two sensors, two O-rings and two rubber plugs. This is how a new sensor looks like. Insert the plug into the opening of the sensor like this. I used a small extender to press it until the head popped out. I remove the connector and then use the EA to remove the free bolts. As you can see there is oil inside the connector and also in the sensor socket. Then I use some brake cleaner to remove the oil stains and I also sprayed some into the connector and let it dry. Insert the new O-rings, fit the new sensors and reinsert the connectors. And there you have it. No more check engine light and no more rough idle. Good job guys. Thank you very much for watching, use the comments section for any questions or suggestions and if you find our videos interesting, make sure you subscribe for the latest wannabe mechanic videos. Bye bye!